wanted to begin by uh, asking you about about the uh, the writing uh, process, and um, you meant you 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 mentioned the land expansion and reclamation in your introduction. So um, maybe you could uh, could you elaborate uh, a bit on how the narrative grew um, uh, from that, and um, how you arrive at the the very you know the interesting uh, structure of the of the film. Um, right. So <clears throat> maybe for um, I, I would say that I started off with the interest of land reclamation, as I mentioned in my introduction just now. Um, so just very interested in this process of my country growing, right? Uh, and someone living in this country that's been expanding like this. Um, so I knew very clearly that I, I wanted to also feature the spaces of, um, that, that, that has been reclaimed. So most of, a lot of the, 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 the stuff that you see are actually the reclaimed parts of uh, Singapore. And particularly this kind of western um, industrial area of, of, of Singapore. <coughs> where mm, probably in ver there are no real um, kind of residentials um, there, so only the dormitories. And it's also where I met the, the, the workers. And so at the start, I didn't have a, a script uh, because I didn't want to write a script. I, I, I knew that the story was going to be about them because I mean, conceptually, it was about the land, but at the same time, there is a human drama there, and, and, and once you meet these people, there's, there's no turning back. The film had to be about them. Um, but when I went, so yeah, when I went down to the location, or the, not exact locations, but the whole sense of this space, just to get, just to get a sense of things, um, I, I, I met them, and I, so the, this writing process, there was maybe like a two years of me actually just hanging out with them. Um, so I didn't write a, a script to kind of put it on to, 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 to this community, but for me it was very important to kind of immerse myself a little bit. Um, and so I, I went to hang out with them um, for, yeah, as I said, for about two years about. And, and through this process, the script slowly took form, took, took its shape, because I, I, I wanted to, to learn about their stories. And, and what you saw in the film, it's uh, kind of tidbits of the stories I've gotten from them and kind of put together into, 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 into what you see. Um, and then there's this other aspect of, of how this film could maybe have been easily also either a documentary or um, maybe a very hard kind of social realist uh, kind of film, right? Um, but it wasn't really my intention to make a film like this because I always feel like this very hard film that I sometimes watch, it creates a lot of sympathy in me, but it doesn't, it might, it doesn't bring me to that next step and I was trying to move away just from this discourse of sympathy to something maybe closer to empathy to like because I, I, I know I know who my audience are you know my audience are not the workers right my audience are people like you myself right um, middle class um, uh, and for my domestic um, audience is the locals and more privileged um, and so, for me, I wanted to create a, a film that was about, that started off with this character that is a lot closer to my own kind of background and my own, as a certain kind of, maybe like a surrogate of myself, or of my audience, as an entry into the film. Um, and then, but of course at the start, you're, you're wondering, why should he care about this case, about this missing worker? It's just another missing worker in a whole sea of like um, people that you don't really care about. You know? So I guess that's kind of the starting point. And so I was creating this structure that, like, that flips into then the lives of these people and then eventually coming the two 
parts start folding into each other into finally um, maybe at the end me and my audience can really get to be more vested into this case. Yeah, I think um, the distinction that you're drawing between like a politically empathetic film and a politically sympathetic film is a very interesting one, and maybe, um, and and maybe uh, it even has uh, something to do with your uh, like the film's relationship, especially in its first half with um, with film noir, um, and especially some of the like the visual characteristics of the so-called neo-noir. Um, so I, w I, was, uh, I was hoping you could just uh, talk a bit about, um, about what, what uh, drew you to, what drew you to um, uh, the genre or certain of those tropes. Um, and, um, and yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, so was, I mean, already I was making a film about a missing person and and, and I guess an investigation about this missing person. So um, one of the methods to do it for me was to already kind of borrow this, this, this kind of neo-noir trope, right? Or, or film noir in general. And for me, using the noir form, I mean, I, 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 like, I like this genre a lot because of what it can do. Um, because for me, the noir, the noir genre is something that straddles quite nicely a certain kind of um, social, um, um, has more, more of the time some kind of social elements, but at the same time framed within certain psychological frameworks, particularly of usually the detective, you know, um, or the whoever who's, who is um, um, investigating the case. And then for me now, I started this film very, with a very strong kind of uh, feeling of the noir, and this is also to kind of set my audience into this 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 mood of because what the noir film is is, is actually n never really about whether the case gets solved most of the time. More more often than not, it's about kind of the labyrinth of the mind of the detective more than anything else. You know what I mean? And so I think very soon, within that first five or ten minutes for me, this film, although it's about a police case, it's very also much about this detective and, and what's kind of bugging him, you know, what's make, keeping him up at night. Um, and maybe going back to what I was saying, because I, I wanted this character to be a certain kind of surrogate, right? And so to, to, to resonate to my audience who's watching um, and so this noir thing is actually very much about the detective and very much about 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 us who is watching the film. So I think I I, I, I borrowed these kind of um, um, noir conventions, but at the same time, they are not really conventions. They were born out of my context, right? Of 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 Singapore or of South, Southeast Asia. I, I literally kind of appropriated from 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 you guys, you know, <laughs> and. Um, so for me, it was important for me that I take I take what I wanted from these kind of from that convention, but at the same time, I kind of subverted it, you know, through the film. And so that's when you start to see the film start to sh shape shift or start to blend and bend. Um, you, you, even down to the music elements, um, it was also this kind of jazzy kind of noir thing. But at the same time, we switch out the the saxophone and we threw in some something more Southeast Asian something. Yeah. So so as as we went along, I mean, <clears throat> the case of of the femme fatale, which you at first maybe think um, that the 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 female character kind of plays that femme, and then not really. You know, so I, 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 because again, the, the, the convention came out of a very specific time and space, right, of, of, of cinema history. And it is not exactly what I'm dealing with at the moment in my context. And so I was borrowing these kind of conventions, but at the same time trying to rework them and subvert them all through the film. And so. And the, um, yeah, well, the, the detective lock is, uh, is like a, uh, uh, sort of a, a very classic kind of noir uh, protagonist. Uh, he's like your your Philip Marlowe. Um, but uh, you know, lot lots of the uh, uh, many of the performers um, are, are their performances are quite striking. And I think the film, uh, I think it's it's a mix of professional and non-professional uh, actors. So um, 
Uh, could you could you uh, tell us a bit about uh, how the the casting uh, proceeded and and maybe just a bit about working working with uh, the actors? Um, so something to note is that aside from the lead characters, everyone is um, non-actors. They are pretty much the the construction workers themselves. Um, maybe because I'm still in a little bit of a documentary mode, I was making a, a documentary before this film. And so my approach is slightly documentary-like in the sense that I don't want to recreate these things. In the first place, it's very hard for me to recreate these things. I, I, it's just not possible to reenact these things. I, I wanted to really catch the workers as they are working in their environment, you know, in the most natural environment in that sense. And so it was very important for us to just keep as much of the real elements, I mean, right down to the musicians who are playing music, they, they are the actual um, construction workers whom I met um, and, and I encountered them with, with my friend here, Bo. Uh, yeah. um, uh, and we, we went to, to Location Scout and we met them and they were playing music and they told me to tell us to come join them and so I went weekly to, to, to dance with them. And so these are the exact people we brought into to the film itself. Right, and I just after a while, and you you kind of have to build that trust with them, and you know after a while I can call them friends, you know, and so I I, I got them involved in the film, um, and then but then I, of course I also had to use some of the uh, some some uh, professional actors because of their time commitment, you know, so um, Peter and it's quite interesting, it's quite a mix because Peter is uh, the the guy playing Locke, the policeman, he is from TV. Uh, and he stopped doing TV for a while because of uh, personal problems. So he was driving the taxi for a long time and this is a bit of a comeback film for him after 15 years uh, after he stopped, which is quite nice because he kind of lost the bad habits of TV. TV, but So we, we brought him back and this, this was uh, um, nice for him. Um, Xiao Yi, the guy who plays Wang, so uh, he's from theater. <coughs> And Luna, um, the guy who the the the, the one pl who plays the female in the cyber cafe, um, she is um, from she's she's a film actress uh, from China. Yeah. So it's a, it's kind of a nice mix of like people from t coming from their different performance uh, practice. And for me, the challenge and the excitement was to kind of put them together at the same time, also put them together with the non actors and. That that was that was fun, you know. So I want to open it up to the audience in uh, just a second. But um, first, I wanted to ask about the uh, about the editing of the film and um, and how that proceeded. Uh, it seemed it's notable uh, your that the the editor you worked with is the filmmaker Daniel Hui, whose work we've shown here at the Film Society before. Could you maybe you could talk a bit about your collaboration? Um, Daniel and I are very close, uh, my editor and I, and Daniel himself is a, is a director uh, of experimental films, of documentary, and he recently also made his um, uh, fiction, um, it's almost like a horror film of some sort. And so this guy is, is very, very talented and amazing, and we've known each other for a long time, and so for me, that's very important. I think that that kind of connection that we've had so I act in his films, he act in my early films. So we have a, a, a long time of collaborating with each other and so we, we, knew, it, we knew kind of what we, 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 we didn't need to talk so much, you know. Yeah, we kind of knew each other in that way and that was very good. And for me also, another thing with um, having someone who does experimental films as an editor, is, is, is always very, I, I think it's very good in the sense that um, people who make experimental films, they, they more often than not, they create the story of their films in post while editing. And so they're very sensitive to, to this editing f process, you know, and they're very, very meticulous and sensitive to it. And so I had a really good time like working with him on, on, on the film and creating this experience which is, a real kind of mix of styles in the film, yeah. Okay, so if you have a question, just raise your hand and we'll bring you a microphone. We'll start right here. Uh, th 
Thank you. You said that you did some years of research for making this film. I was wondering if any of the workers told you about the scene between Jason and Ajit, where he's asking him, so are we treating you well? Tell the policeman all these different things very clearly, like telling him you are supposed to say that you're being treated well here or things will happen to you. Did workers tell you about those kind of things happening? Um, so no, no one said this exactly, but there's a lot, a lot of cases where um, you have people whom they know that something wrong has happened, okay, or something not so good has happened to their friend, okay, but they are not, um, they're afraid to, to testify. And this is also another thing that uh, also working with the NGOs who works with um, the migrant workers, they, they find this big impasse whenever they need to get um, people to testify for something. Yeah. Um, because the system is very, very against, uh, very, very against them. They're, they're m most, eight, like 70% of the, the worry of the people I've met, the anxieties that they have, is the problem of repatriation. They're very afraid of getting sent back. Um, and this is because they borrow a lot of money to come to Singapore to work, to pay for the agency fees. From some of my research, I've, I've met people who needed to work for two years before they can even start earning money. Right? So they have to work for two years to pay back what they borrowed. Um, and if the bosses don't like them, they get injured, something happens, they get sent back. Um, no refund. Um, so they get sent back with debt that they didn't start, you know, they didn't even have in the first place. And so they are kind of stuck in this, um, they're not, they're, they're afraid. They're afraid of their bosses, they're afraid to testify, they're afraid, yeah. It, which really gets it into a very um, problematic and very painful um, thing whenever I talk to them about these things. Yeah, so, so th this, this scene, for me, the inability to speak came really much out of this um, issue. What was the process like um, obtaining access to the construction sites for filming, mm -hmm. especially since your film is critical of that industry? Um, it was tough. <laughs> yeah, because we're not saying very nice things about the industry, right? So it was tough. And if you've been to Singapore, you can also get a sense that things are very, very regulated, right? Um, so we had to be creative. <laughs> uh, there, there, there are some locations that we got permissions for, and there are some we didn't. And for those that we didn't, I, we either do it on the sly, or we, I, I rewrite. I saw a lot of rewriting went around getting the location, I mean getting access or non-access to the locations. Because again, we, we really were very insistent on using real locations. In the first place, it was very hard for us to, re to, to, to create a set of, of any of these locations, you know. So, here, I mean, here's an example. I think um, it was very, we, we, we had problems with being on the sand of the land reclamation sites. Um, and so I rewrote the scene and now they're on a boat. <laughs> So we, although we're not on the sand itself, right? We didn't get permit to be on the sand. We were on the boat. We're shooting onto the sand, and we just like built a lot more scenes on the boat, right? So I, I just had to, and this was like in the middle of our shoot, or so you know. So we just have to just keep thinking on our toes to, and I just had to rewrite a few a number of other things like this. Um, but then later on, I really think that in some ways it's a blessing in disguise, to put it that way, because that scene on the boat really worked for me. Like, it was, like the tension between the characters would have been so much, is so much stronger on the boat um, than if they were on the sand, right? So I, I, it, these things happen, right? <laughs> While trying to get locations. Um, there was also us trying to mix and match locations. 
So although it feels like it is one consistent uh, location, we, we, we actually borrowed from different, different places to, to put them together and try to color correct and try to create a consistent experience of the space. Yeah. So we can take one uh, final question. Did you, did you feel politically stressed about making this film? And having made this film, where do you sit for your future? Um, right, so uh, the question being, am I, did I feel stress politically, right? Um, making this film, yes. I think that's a straightforward answer for me. Um, because we do have cases of um, films that get banned or get into trouble or um, things get confiscated. And, but then maybe I would say that the more medieval kind of enforcement on these things are, um, haven't, haven't happened recently. And so maybe things are loosening up. Um, although, since there is a history of it, we were a little bit um, um, cautious about it. And so we didn't also make it a big deal that we were shooting this film when we were shooting it, right? So I think we, we just have to keep our heads a bit low um, when we were doing it. Um, it's not overtly political. I think if it was overtly, overtly political, we would have um, even a lot more problems, right? Um, but now that we have released this film, uh, I think we feel kind of relieved uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm still here talking to you guys, right? <laughs> so uh, I think things are sort of okay. And it, it, it really helped that this film has been to some nice festivals and won some awards. And I think this whole system helps us in terms of having the film screen smoothly. And yeah, I think sort of leave it as that. But the final outcome is, uh, I mean, it's, the film is still running and there's still a lot of um, um, conversation that's, that, 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 that's coming up for this film. But I think now, for me, it's, it's, it's the good conversation. It's, it's the conversation of my audience that I'm trying to um, elicit here, right? I mean, there's disagreements of, on the film itself, of course. And, but that's, that's the kind of conversation that I want to create with the film. And so that's, that's good for me. And um, maybe just to, to conclude, you could, uh, could you tell us anything about what you're working on next, since it seems germane to the, to the last question? Um, yeah, so, so now we're, we're um, starting on this new project, um, also about Singapore. I guess that's, that has been, this land is my main concern, you know, and um, we're making, working on a film on, about surveillance. Um, Singapore also being a, a very small country, and so it's very easily surveillanced. <laughs> Um, and we're, we're moving into very high-tech kind of surveillance also, and the, this idea of the smart nation. Um, so I, I think increasingly so, living in a, in a, in a country, feeling like, uh, and this is probably not just Singapore, but my, myself feeling like I'm, I'm, my existence is an image. You know, I, I, I live to be seen in some ways. And then what does it really mean um, to, 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 to see someone these days, right? Sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm a bit nostalgic of someone just like holding up a binoculars to look at me, right? <laughs> because at least this person will have to project some form of humanity onto me to understand what he's looking at, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, so I guess these kind of ideas, I, I work through, I guess, quite philosophically with all my films in, in terms of certain concepts, and that's how I start. Yeah, so now we are um, developing something on, on the lines of this. Well, we look forward to it, and thank you for this film, and thank, thank you, you for being here, and thank all of you. Thank you for staying. Thank you.